Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Nia's Perspectives. Today we're going to talk about setting goals. Again, it doesn't cost you a thing. If this is your first time tuning in, don't forget to please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you. Welcome to lesson four of module one of the Budget and Saves Lives course. My name is Nia. I am your chief learning officer and I'll be here today. We're going to talk about setting goals. So we've talked about, you know, getting your mind together and getting your mind, getting your head in the game. We've talked about Rome not being built in a day and have you have to be patient with yourself. We've looked at our uh, perspectives about money and how we think about things. So now it's time for us to start setting a goal. So the next module will be focusing on the anatomy of a budget. So before you begin to make me, ugh, before you begin to make your budget, you want to set goals because it's important to set goals. It gives you something to work towards and it kind of helps you stay motivated and keep the momentum. Um, why you need to go that's exactly why because it's okay to say that you want to do this or you want to do that but putting an actual quantifiable goal will give you an exact number to work to if you're saving trying to get a thousand dollars as you see that number rise the closer it gets to the a thousand dollars it will give you something to celebrate and when you have something to celebrate and you start to see those results and you see what you're doing working it can be a wonderful momentum shifter so that's one of the reasons why it's very important to set goals um another thing is people who set goals are more successful usually so based on the study i found of course with my my online research <laughs> Basically, 14% of people who have goals are 10 times more successful than those without goals. The 3% with written goals are three times more successful than the 14% with unwritten goals. So I need you all to be a part of the 3%. And that's why you're here, because you want to be a part of the 3% that you set your goals and you attain them. So that's one of the reasons why it's really important. When you don't set a goal, you don't, it's like driving in a car and you have no where that you're driving to. You have no end destination. You're just driving aimlessly. And who wants to waste their gas and not have any direction? Having a goal gives you direction and it gives you something to accomplish. If you don't set a goal, you know, when do you celebrate? You don't have a time to celebrate because you don't have anything that you're trying to reach. So that's what we're going to work on in this module. So setting goals. The first thing about setting goals is you want to make sure that your goal is realistic. Setting specific realistic goals is key because it gives you set goals. It's not enough to just say, I want to get better with my finances. It's not enough to say, oh, well, I want to buy a house. Look further into it and find out, well, how much money do you need to have when you buy a house? What does your credit score need to be when you buy a house? It might be a good idea to go discuss this with a lender and they can give you actual numbers and then you can use those numbers to set goals. How much debt do you have? You want to be debt free. Well, what is the number that will actually get you to be debt free? You want to retire and move abroad. Okay. What's the number? What's that magic number? Or if even if you want to leave your nine to five and go and work your business full time, you need that magic number. That's the amount that will get you to your goal so you can attain it. If you know you need to save six hundred dollars within three months, then, you know, maybe I can save one hundred dollars every paycheck. OK, I know I need two hundred dollars this month. So you'll know when you're on track and when you're not on track, which means you can know when you need to get an overdrive and you can know when you're the coast. So that's one of the reasons why it is very important to set specific goals. And not only that, to have stuff to celebrate, to give yourself bragging rights, to give yourself notches on your belt. It's important to give yourself notches on your belt because the financial journey is not an easy one. It's not one that's very easy and you start it and then it's done in two weeks. It's a very long process sometimes depending on what your goals are. For me personally, it's going to take a while because I have very big goals for things that I want for myself. And as I accomplish one, I usually create another, but that's just me. So that's 
things that you should think about and decide what, see, this is going to be a problem for me because it keeps doing that. So that's something that you should think about and decide, okay, this is what I want to do. Then you can reverse engineer it. When you set a goal, it gives you a way to work backwards. Okay. I know I want to buy a house. I need to have this credit score. I need to have this much money in savings. I need to have this much down payment. Okay. What do I have now? Okay. So this is the deficit between what I have now and what I need to get. Okay. So how do I get that? Okay. So to get my credit together, I need to pay my debt off. I need to lower the utilization on my credit cards. Okay. I need to get this bankruptcy, you know, let it get a little older. So it's not affecting my score as much. It gives you a way to attain. It gives you makes it attainable because when you don't know exactly what needs to be done and you have the unknown, a lot of times that can discourage you and that can cause you not to even work towards those goals because you don't know what exactly you need to do. And when you don't know what to do or you don't know about something, you usually make up things in your head about what it is, which may not necessarily be true. You want to have actual factual information. That's why you make specific and realistic goals. Give yourself a destination. Give your finances a destination. Give them somewhere to go. Making goals will be what you will set in this module. You do have the goal worksheet that will be located as the next lesson. And then basically you want to download that and fill that lesson out. It does ask you to identify your short term goals, which is normally within the next five years. And then your long term goals, which goes about to 10 years. So you want to identify both of those before you move on to the next level and you set your budget. Because after you set your budget, then we're going to work on curbing your spending. After we finish with spending, then the last module for this course will be savings. So you setting your goals now will shape the rest of this course. It shapes your mindset about working into it. So how do you feel after completing the perspectives worksheet? Do you look at your money differently now? Do you look at your goals and what you want to do differently after completing that worksheet? That's the reason why I wanted specifically to have the goals as the last module for this one. And then you start off looking at budgeting because the next process for the first lesson of the next one, you're going to find and locate your bills and expenses. And all you're going to do is list them and identify all of them. And then you'll deep dig deep down into that. So the next part about it is you might be a person. Sometimes you need small wins. If you are a small win type of person, then maybe you need to break your goals into three years, five years, seven years, nine years, because that will give you those small wins that you need. That will give you the momentum to keep going. It's almost like a relay race with yourself where you're passing yourself the baton and then you're going to the next phase. So maybe you need those momentum shifters. If you want to save $5,000, break it up into, increments of a thousand. So each time you reach a thousand, you just roll it over and add them all together. That way, once you reach 5,000, it doesn't seem as far away as, oh, I reached a thousand. Okay. I just need to reach a thousand again. As you continue to work towards that 1,000, you'll reach it quicker and then you'll be at 5,000 before you know it. So sometimes small wins and small goals is the way to go, but you have to identify which one works for you. And that's something for you to think about as you go through this financial journey. Think about how you're feeling. Do you have points where you feel discouraged? Do you have points where you feel like, oh, well, I don't even know why I'm doing this for. That's a time for you to re- Look at your goals, look at them again, remind yourself if you need to put them and get the posted app on your desktop and put them where when you first log on, if you need to put them on your mirror, if you need to put them as your screen on your cell phone, that's the next part of it. You want to make your goals visible to you. You don't want to create these goals. And that's why I created in a worksheet. You can either leave this worksheet on your computer or you can print it out if you like. It is a PDF fillable document, so you are able to type in it, but if you don't want to, you're more than welcome to, type, to type, to print it out, I'm sorry. So making your goals visible is the next part of it. You wanna make sure you can see them because you wanna stay focused. You wanna keep yourself focused because we have, you know, life gets in the way. Maybe this happens, you have children, this has to go on, especially right now, we have so much stuff going on in the world that's easily distract you from what's going on for yourself. So it's important to make sure those goals are visible to keep. Maybe you need to make a vision board and put it on your vision board. I'm not saying you have to put the whole worksheet on your vision board, but you can 
take the small portion, maybe you can make it smaller, print it out. You can make it smaller on when you print it out from a computer screen and then post it on your vision board. If that's something that will help you and just make it whatever you need to do. And maybe that's the thing. If you find yourself forgetting about it, okay, well, what I'm doing is not working. That's when you need to revisit it and see what works for you. Because the goal about this and about anything else is you have to do what works for you. I preach that all the time. You can't look at cookie cutter solutions because everybody's situation is different. Like myself, people ask me all the time, well, how did you do this? Or what are you doing this? Or, and I share, but I also tell people, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not any financial advice that I'm giving you. This is what I did. And what I did is based on my solution. I am not here to tell you, you did this wrong. I'm not here to tell you what you should have did. And oh, well, why did you do this? That's not what I'm here to tell you. I'm here to provide education and to help you get where you want to be. I'm here to help you get it right. That's what I'm here for. So with that being said, make sure you set your goals, make sure they're realistic and they are specific to you and your financial situation. And then you wanna make sure that they are visible to you. The worksheet you will find as the next selection, make sure you complete it. If you do have any questions, definitely don't worry about reaching out to me. Now, was that was so bad, right? So when setting goals, you want to think about those things, make sure they're important, make sure they're visible to you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I know you took that like and hit that subscribe button. Drop down any comments. Do you have any tips that you use when you're setting goals? Until next time, thank you for tuning in to Nia's Perspectives.